Randy Rain here, and I have Robocong from Bandai, a Japanese robot themed after King Kong. I love it already. This is Randy Robot Garage. I've been looking for robots for quite some time now, and this is the first one of these I've ever seen. I don't really understand these controls. It looks like it would be, you know, directional here, but then here at the bottom it has these arrows up and down, and at the top it has left and right. I have no idea what that means. I've never put batteries into this thing until now. It takes two C's. Okay. And nothing happens. Well, I'm dying to see what this thing can do with these big brute arms. So, I'm going to get started. Okay, there's only two screws back here. Looks like there's one there. There's none down on the bottom. Alright, that's those. As I suspected. There's some little rubber gasket thing on it. I really like his head. I think I'm going to redo this and actually put that dot in the center. Uh. Ah. Well, that's interesting. Guess that can come off. Well, that's pretty neat. Alright, there's three motors in here. Two for the wheels and one for the arms. I think I'm going to go here first. Well, these are different screws. Mm -hmm. So here's something I do. At this point, there's a white wire connecting to this motor. I'll take a metal here. Uh, scratch a W into that. There's a green over here. And I'll scratch a G there. Okay. I'll put a B for blue. And a Y for yellow. Don't use marker or anything like that. That's for sure. This is what I thought. There's like these tabs here. Yeah, right here we're going to go red, R, B, L, black. So these are idle gears, turning these. I don't see any cracks. These are the ones that would be cracked. These are just spinning, so they won't crack. It's a good thing too, because uh, these are small gears. The only replacement thing I have. This is a much bigger secondary gear here. I plugged my soldering iron in and it popped and it didn't work. Opened it up to see if I could see what popped. Couldn't see anything. It was all a little tiny micro component, so it's not like I'm going to fix it anyway. So I had to pull out my old radio shack. Yeah, this one still works. This one's what, I don't know, uh, 30 years old now, I guess. Don't even have any replacement tips for it. I'm not going to pay a bunch of money for one, though. If they're just going to keep breaking. But there's a split happening on these, this gear. Uh, but I have one of these. Yeah. Let's see what these motors do. Mm, that one worked. It's a no on that one. All right, I've shown how to open these up and clean them so many times. So I'm going to show you how not to do it. I'm just going to squirt some oil into there. Squirt some oil into there. Squirt some oil into there. All down there. And I'm just going to spin it. And then I'm going to hook some power to it. Now for this one. Nothing. 
give it a little spin. Try. There we go. Got that slot car smell going. So, yeah, it's missing a screw there. Probably just left it off. Didn't need it. myself in a little mess here. Let's undo you. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's missing? It came back out. Oh, great. Oh, what the hell did you just do? Not like that. We'll put you back together just for a second. This guy. All right, I figured this all out. The motor is going to be connecting here, and it's touching this gear right here, which is an idle gear. It's going to turn this gear, which is also an idle gear, and it's also missing some teeth here. That little gear right there is turning this gear, which is connected to the shaft. And so it's going to turn it one direction, and it's going to let slip right here. A little ratcheting, it slips. And that's the closing of the arms. Then when you reverse the motor, what's going to happen is it's now going to lock into place. And it's going to start spinning this gear right here. And what happens when that one spins, it's connected to this one right here. And this one's connected to this here. And when that happens, this one is raising and lowering the arms. And then this one is connected to the other part that's raising and lowering the arms. And you can see there's little stops here that keep stop it from going too far. And that's how that works. There's some little ratcheting system here that's locking that into place. So this gearbox can go back. This goes like that. This is going to sit in there like that. That goes in there. Forgot about that. I'm going to see if I can put a screw here. Oh, there we go. I like a screw here. However, I did forget this piece. Mm hmm. springs are getting a little rusty. So now I just need to figure out how what position these things need to be in. I don't think it matters the opening and closing here on this gear that's missing teeth. I think that only has to do with this. 
they're the same springs and they should be backwards so I'm just going to assume it was like this go through here yeah like that right right that's right then these feed through down here to go to the motors have a look inside here see what's going on okay this is pretty straightforward when you move the little joysticks you're disconnecting one from ground I'm sure and then pushing down and making it go positive do it this way you disconnect from ground and make it go positive I tried to get the decal off and save it but there was no saving it all the printing just crumbled and fell off so I printed out this and I'm gonna try this shoe goo it basically smells just like model cement As I was looking online, I found one of these and there were some pretty good pictures of it and it had some extra decals that this one doesn't have. So I made my own from the picture, about the best you're going to get. I just printed these out and put packing tape as the laminate on top. The shoe goo works pretty good. Shoe betcha. Now the other thing that I noticed when I found one online was that the reason this doesn't move very well is because they're supposed to be treads. So I have treads that I have to make now. So I 3D printed out this piece.
So there it is, the Robocong by Bandai. Now the little stickers on here are stuck pretty good, and that's my new method, is the shoe goo. That stuff will stick stickers on there pretty darn good. So as for the treads, I think a little more denser rubber would be better, but they still work pretty good, and it works. I can make it move around. I think I know where they got the idea to call it Robocong. Let me show you. So let me try to pick up some of these foam rubber ducks that I make. They're light enough for it. I can easily pick these up. Now I'll move it closer to the camera. And I'll just set it down. <laughs> So if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a big thumbs up. If you want to see more, of course, hit the subscribe button and go check out all the other videos that I've already done on robots and mechanical toys and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I'd like to thank these people right here. These are patrons. These are people helping me out. These are the people bringing you the Robocong by Bandai. Could not do it without them. So I thank them oh so very much. If you'd like to become a patron, of course, there are perks. And there's links and all that stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's the Robocong from Bandai. That was... Okay, this better work because this is all I'm doing. I guess it'll be display only if it doesn't work. Huh, they want to...